So welcome, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time, and especially thank you, Zach, for uh, for you also taking the time to share your experience uh, with with our current students. So, uh, Zach graduated as we were just talking a few seconds ago uh, in 2020, like three years and a couple of months ago. Uh, I think during the whole the whole course and uh, and a little bit after he graduated, uh, we keep chatting a lot, right? A lot of about the technologies, the things that, that he was learning. And um, we have these interesting conversations uh, every now and then, or when he learns something new, a new technology, he usually report or we, we uh, chat on, on Discord. And a few weeks ago, I just, uh, step by and say hi to Zach to see how every uh, how he was doing after three years and for my surprise he mentioned that he worked as a developer and now he switched careers a little bit and I immediately invite him to to be <laughs> our next spotlight speaker and I want you guys to to hear uh, the story and ask questions and learn as much as you can so thank you, thank you, Zach, for for taking the time. Um, so let's start. How how was it for you after after you completed uh, the course three years ago? After I completed, it was uh, it, it didn't stop there. Um, you kind of got to keep it going. Um, you, you get a really good base here. You get all your you know basic. Here's how. Here's the, all the building blocks put them together now build on top of it you know go into the libraries go into your now it's ai of course um <clears throat> a lot of machine learning at the time when i graduated was happening um i actually continued on doing more c sharp yeah it was it was more my area um ended up not using it at all <laughs> but there you go um okay. i think the big thing was LinkedIn was my best friend. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't promote that enough. Um, so many people on there and you have no idea who's looking at your profile, who's looking for what you've got and, you know, really just kind of brand yourself on LinkedIn. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We usually recommend all the students to up, uh, to have open and update the, the LinkedIn account and the status to follow the university, follow the teachers and with the teachers can endorse uh, the technologies that that uh that we cover um it's interesting that uh, you didn't end up using c sharp i remember that you were really really interesting and, and spending a lot of time learning and in much more than what we cover in class uh, back then so uh what was your first a uh, job uh i was actually uh i guess recruited by accenture um Pretty, pretty big company. Um, had no idea what they did. Never heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was uh, it, it was actually uh, more of an apprenticeship at first is what they mm -hmm. called it. Uh, it was paid. You got full company benefits, but I can't remember if it was nine months, uh, so, somewhere along that line before they would say yay or nay. Um, mm -hmm. And I was actually put with uh, client Duke Energy out here in North Carolina. Um <clears throat> and I was initially supposed to be doing software development with Angular. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, back then, uh, instead of teaching React on, on FSDI, we, we cover uh, Angular. Yeah. Okay, so... It came in handy. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course, of course. They, they are hand in hand in, in terms of uh, popularity. Uh, so, yeah, anything... Uh, either way, I mean, React or Angular, anything in JavaScript will will do the trick, right? Mm -hmm. um, so how was for you, if you, if you remember back then, starting on a, on a new career, on a new job as a, as a software developer after completing the course? Did you say how long? Uh, how was, like, it was difficult? Oh, was you it? dedicated a lot of time to learn more? I think I think the difficult part was overcoming the imposter syndrome <laughs> honestly <laughs> um you probably probably read about it uh you, you really I, I felt it at least um a few months in because people were just 
slinging terms at me that, you know, I, I had no idea what they were talking about. I just, yeah, yeah. Shake my head and nod. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll get that done. And then Google's your best friend after that, you know, <laughs> but um, it, it, it's, it's a lot different than you think it's going to be. Um, I can't speak for everybody, you know, every company, but uh, Accenture was a pretty long onboarding process. Um, really had nothing to do with software development for the onboarding. It was a lot of business uh, intro, I guess you'd call it. And uh, after that, though, it, it started to fit, you know, fit together finally. Yeah, and uh, we usually discuss, and I think every single presenter that has been here on the on the spotlight has mentioned the imposter syndrome, and that you should try to avoid it as much as you can, and you should at least recognize that it will be there, and yeah. that. Uh, Things are not as hard as, as we tend to see, right? Especially during the during the interview processes. Uh, as for new terms, I think it's normal. I think uh, the the new the 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 slang or the new terms that we get uh, are not dependent so much on the technology. Most of the time, they are dependent on the on the domain on the business domain that we get into. So that that requires to some as a software developer. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can confirm this. You will be required not only to learn about technologies, but also about the the business that you are in. Like if if you are in real estate, then you need to learn a little bit about the real estate and the terms that are used in real estate and the processes that yeah. are used. So, what was the 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 domain that you got into the, the type of business on you know, when you were uh, doing software? It was more utilities, uh, power, gas. They had just acquired uh piedmont natural gas or something like that anywho yeah i had no idea what they were talking about because i'd never been in that realm at all um a little bit of electrical work but not enough to know what they what they meant what they were looking for um, and that, yeah I'm... Go ahead, i was gonna say that that's another thing you, you come into is learning how to deal with people um and what they want versus what they think they want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh... if, if, if you happen to be on those roles, right, where you need mm. to kind of get the information from the client and help the client understand what they really want and need. Yeah. And that, that's part of, of uh, the project management side that we also cover uh, on the, uh, during the course. So, how long do you work as a as a software developer? Uh let's see. I started Accenture February of twenty one. Uh probably until mm, October of twenty one. Okay. Um our specific project was Angular based. Um initially we were just doing a revamp of a program somebody had written on a laptop somewhere. And it was in three or four different languages to make it work. And we were basically just doing uh, an Angular rework with Postgres on the back end uh, using Node. Mm -hmm. And then it got turned into, well, we're just going to host it on AWS. Okay. So then all of a sudden I had to learn AWS and it was a crash course. And all of a sudden I've got to learn Terraform and Vault from HashiCorp. And that's really where... I just transitioned because the guy I was working with, it was just two of us and he was, you know, super Java proficient and pretty good with Angular. So he kept doing basically the front and back end and I did all the cloud. Um, it, so all this kind of just fell in my lap, honestly. It's not a, <laughs> I didn't train to do it. It just kind of, hey, mm -hmm. learn it, learn this, do it, <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and that gave you the opportunity, right? First of all, to yeah. learn and to prove yourself and, and to switch a careers a little bit. But before we get, before we go there, uh, do you think that it's normal or, or it will be a common requirement for future software developers that they will be uh, required to learn something new, something that we didn't cover on, on, uh, on the, on the course? Yeah, th there's always something new happening. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, Chad GPT is a big one right now, even with the company I work for, they're starting to look at it and, you know, do a little risk management 
on what what they should and shouldn't use with it um mm -hmm. you know i've had to i've had to write scripts for certain things i can't remember how to do bash scripts so yeah chat gpt spinning me up a bash script that does this you know um yeah but yeah that, that's about as far as we use it um yeah actually when i started learning terraform and ashcorp vault that was i mean bleeding edge it had just come out really um not a lot was known about them and they just happened to be using that as uh like a secret locker or a mm -hmm. secret back end and infrastructure as code tool so that's how i learned that <laughs> okay so um so uh you started a work you you finish the course you work as a software developer you you start using angular the technology that we covered during class uh, as you mentioned at the beginning, you start learning more and more about it. And at some point you were given the responsibility of moving the project to cloud. And uh, yep. no previous training on cloud. You didn't know much about cloud. And it was at that point, I imagine your responsibility of learning and have, it, have the project working, right? <laughs> right. Then you did it, you learn a... Uh, Terraform and AWS and all these technologies that are required to manage your project. And then what happened later that you left your, your software developer uh, position? Uh, with Accenture when I left. Mm -hmm. um, I just got a random message on LinkedIn saying, uh, hey, uh, we see HashiCorp Vault uh, Terraform on your resume. How'd you like to do this? And they threw a number out. They're like, here's the start and salary. And I was like, yeah, sign me up. I mean, a hundred percent remote. Um, that was big for me because we were still remote there, but, um, please, I, I'm, I'm in North Carolina. Uh, I work in Minnesota. So, um, there was that benefits. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, it's too much to turn down basically. Yeah. I actually wasn't even looking, you know, for work. It was just, Hey, you want to see this? <laughs> yeah, and that, that's amazing, yeah. right? That's the that as you mentioned, that's the big benefit of LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine that even though you were not looking to to for new jobs, you kept updating your, your LinkedIn to mention these new technologies that you just learned, yep. and that's how they 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 found you. Yep, uh, it was actually a contracting company, Tech Systems. Um, and then I started there actually October, uh, about a year ago, uh, October 31st was my first day at mm -hmm. prime therapeutics. And this past August, they hired me on full time. So left the contracting world. Um, it's not for me. A lot of people yeah. love it, but <laughs> it, it's, it wasn't my cup of tea for sure. Mm-hmm. And now, what what's uh, what's your your role? What's your title? What what type of uh, tech job are you doing? Uh, it's security engineer, IT, um, mostly managing, uh, fully managing the Hash, uh, HashiCorp suite. Uh, mm -hmm. That's including Terraform and Vault. Uh, looking to add a few more to that next year. Um, also, a little bit of IBM work on their software. Uh, security mm -hmm. suite uh, identity management so not a lot of that but mostly the cloud okay piece of and, it. sorry that's that's great and do you think that even though during, on this course we didn't cover a cloud and nothing or almost nothing about a security especially back then do you think either way that this course helped you getting there Oh, absolutely. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, I wouldn't be where I was. Um, yeah, I mean, it just kind of snowballed and you just pick up things along the way as much as you can. Um, it's not, I didn't get a, any kind of a certification for this stuff. Um, found that, found that out a lot. You'll see a lot of people, I'm certified in this, but they've never actually even touched the technology. They just, mm -hmm. they're good at taking tests. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, learn as much as you can. I mean, just pile it in. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank you, uh, Dr. Beal. Uh, you, you're muted. Sorry. 
Hi, Zach. Thanks for taking the time to speak to all of us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was interested. Uh, uh, you mentioned that, you know, the course uh, helped you, uh, you know, with these future projects. Can you be more specific? Can you tell us, like, well, I use this technology for that or this helped me build, you know, my my knowledge in this specific technology down the line? Can you help, can you give us an idea of how that how the course provides you that? basic fundamental knowledge that you could later take, uh, you know, and, and build on. Yeah. So you're basically, you know, you're learning the, actual, the building blocks of all this, uh, you know, you're learning functions, you're learning, uh, geez, I don't remember all of it. It was a lot. Uh, the thing that stuck with me the most ended up was, I can't remember the third part or who the instructor was, but it was all the agile and business side. And I use that the most, honestly. Um, actually, I, even with Accenture, I used all that. I mean, waterfall, um, we use Kanban boards all the time, Jira. Um, but yeah, just learning, like, uh, Dr. Nzunza said, I was a C-sharp aficionado. Um, so it really made me dig into it. I mean, really made me dig into it. And I kept going, kept going, just learning, doing Udemy courses after the fact, um, just to pick up things, you know, how to use libraries, how to use these little widgets people come up with, what not to trust, you know, on all this stratosphere of <laughs> tools that we use. Um, but I mean, really, yeah, everything you're learning in this course is going to push you forward. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, can we say then based on, on, on on your comment that one of the most important things that you learn here is to learn on your own or to learn more about tech? Yep. Yep. You can, you can study this stuff till you're blue in the face. And it, if you're like me, uh, there was times I was looking at stuff. I was like, I don't, I don't get this at all. I don't get it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's just things that don't click until you just do it over and over and over. And finally it's like, Oh, I was overthinking it. You know? <laughs> just, yeah normally how it happens. Awesome. Thank you. Dr. Arrico? Well, um, kind of, um, you kind of started answering the question that I had for you of, um, were there any non-technical skills that you developed during the program that have proven to be equally important in your professional success? Writing documentation. Besides learning, <laughs> learning to learn on your own. <laughs> were there yeah. any other? L learning how to write good documentation let me amend my last statement <laughs> i've read a lot of documentation whether it's good or not it's up for debate but um you get better at it yeah um time management is super super important uh especially working from home mm -hmm. uh, i usually come down here uh my daughter leaves at 7 30 to go to school and then i i usually don't come out of my little dungeon down here till about four o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> so um yeah it's, it's nose to the grindstone for me uh that's just how i'm how i work but uh yeah time management skills um managing yourself learning on your own like i said is paramount because you will have to figure this stuff out and there's usually people that can help you you know the stack overflows invaluable <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean yeah thank you so much no. Okay, guys. Uh, so anyone questions? Uh, we have one, Vinita. Hi, can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Sorry, I'm driving. Let me pull over. Hey, I have so many questions, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> many. So many. Okay, first one. Uh, Zach, right? Yes. Okay. Um, are you are you a veteran by any chance? I am. Okay, I kind of figured that part, right? I don't know something about you. <laughs> Reminds me of that. I'm 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 military as well. So no, um, right. So it's so cool to see veterans, right, go into this mm -hmm. program. So my question would be, um, how hard did you like, did you work while you were in the program at all? I mean, how how did that work out for you, like going through the program? Um, and then also, how easy was it for you to obtain employment after? Um, you graduated or were certified? So I, I was in a 
kind of a unique situation when I went through the program. Um, let's see, that was 2020. It had just started. Uh, my dad had passed away May of the previous year, and he had a business that I had to close down for his estate. So actually, while I was closing that down, I was doing the class or doing all the, the school stuff. Um, so yeah, kind of was working, but not, not full time like I was beforehand. Um, and what was the second question? I'm sorry. It was how long? No, no, no. Um, I have a lot of questions, but um, no, oh. this question was um, how, um, how soon or how difficult did you think, um, did you find it to find employment right after um, you were completed with the program? It was scary. <laughs> Not gonna lie, um, I put stuff out everywhere. I mean, I mean everywhere. Uh, even even good old Monster dot com. Um, let's see. So we finished in August, and I found out. I think it was December when I got contacted about the Accenture. So it wasn't that long, but it, it felt like a long time. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was also at a point where you know. COVID had just started shutting everybody down and this kind of work kind of proliferated everywhere. There were all of a sudden all these developers everywhere. And I, you know, that was worrisome, right. but that's calmed down a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, my, my advice there is to don't stop trying to put it, put yourself everywhere and brand yourself for what you want. Got it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. And if I can extend a little bit there, uh, on on Zach's uh, situation, it was a few months. Uh, we have had a uh, all over the range, right? Uh, the I think the previous spotlight speaker, uh, he found job after one or two weeks after completing uh, the course. We had an experience that I plan to invite really soon that he was working as a developer even before finishing uh, the, the course. And we have had other situations also where the student uh, spent or struggles a few months uh, before he gets the, the first initial offer. Uh, Anna, Dr. Anna Rico. Oh yeah, were there any unexpected um, aspect of the job search or the interview process that you wish you had known earlier? I I had heard about the the dreaded uh, you know twelve interview process for becoming a developer. Um, luckily, didn't have to go through that. Um, I think I had six total though. Okay. Uh, none of them were whiteboard. Um, surprisingly and I was ready for it you know I was <laughs> learning you know fizz buzz and all that all that stuff but um never had to do one they just kind of said okay well we'll bring you on board and see what you can do and <laughs> let's go from there okay thank yeah. you Raheem? hey Zach how's it going hey. um I had a question was the uh AWS portion that you were uh doing and work was it the devops it well uh, it was more of the infrastructure setup uh it, it did include devops um basically our setup if i'll try and tldr it was we had our code base we pushed that into bitbucket bitbucket got picked up by concourse as our devops orchestration tool and then that was sent over to our aws account uh I think we stored ours in S3 and it was fed out through CloudFront and all, you know, all the AWS pieces that we had in place. So yeah, it was, it was, I mean, I guess you could call it AWS full stack because uh, we pretty much had everything from start to finish done on it. Okay. Okay. Any question? Any other question guys? Everyone? Anyone? Manila? Yep. <laughs> Okay, so um, I have another question. So um, I'm not too sure if uh, if everyone already are current students here, right? Are they all current? Okay. Yeah. Um, I was invited. Okay, perfect. So um, I'm supposed to start uh, on the 20th, and I spoke to I can't remember his name, Doctor. Uh, okay, I can't remember the the, um, the individual I spoke with. Yes. Say that name again. 
Cardenas, Dr. Cardenas. Dr. Cardenas, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. And I was speaking to him and letting him know, like, you know, I'm very interested in the program. I come at a master's and I work in clinical research. And so I'm looking for a pathway um, to like information tech, like coding, all that good stuff, right? Trying to bridge the gap between the two. Mm -hmm. So my question to you, Zach, is what tips do you, can you provide a newbie like me who's not in that tech field, who's more on the clinical side? Like what tips can you provide um, for someone like me starting out? Have you, have you done coding or any of this before? No experience at all. No experience. Dig in. <laughs> That's where <laughs> the, the, really the, the self-learning comes in a lot. Uh, I mean, I, I can't stress it enough, even if you, you've got it keep, you know, once you've got it, you got to keep it. Um, and you can only do that by using it. I think I did something every day. Uh, didn't matter what it was, uh, usually going through Udemy courses when they were on sale. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I, I heard about Udemy. Okay. Yeah. I was, uh, I, I, I never, uh, doubted that a uh, sack will do it, that he will get a job on, on software because of, of the conversations that we used to have uh, where we, uh, where he said, uh, I need to learn C sharp and I, I want to learn about gaming and I'm doing this course. And, uh, to me, it was not so much about the technology or the new language or anything about that. It was just the constant learning and digging in as, as, as he mentioned, I think that's the key. And, uh, yet again, Zach has confirming and as every other uh, spotlight speaker has done, like you need to practice guys, yeah. uh, Samantha. Um, so I don't know if I missed it. Did you have any previous experience Zach, like doing any coding or anything coming into it? Uh, let me see. That was 2020. So. I'm going to date myself a little bit, 17 years prior, maybe. <laughs> uh, I had learned some VB.net, and I enjoyed coding at the time. Um, and then I just kind of let it fall by the wayside and did other things, uh, you know, a teenager. Uh, so no, no, not professionally, no. Okay. Uh, one other question. Um, did you have uh, like a secret clearance or anything? Uh, not, not for the job. Uh, it expired before I even started the course. Okay. So, yeah. Did that help you at all to get in or did you even say any of that on your resume or anything? Nope. Uh, no, okay. mine had expired in, I got out in 2015. Uh, I think it expired in 2018 and I didn't do anything to re-up it because I didn't really want to put my whole family through that <laughs> again. So no, awesome. I didn't, I didn't Thank you. think about it. Okay. I think it's a pretty marketable skill or, or uh, ability or nice to have that you should guys definitely put on your resumes if you happen to have security clearance. Put it oh, in yeah. you, big, yeah. bold letters in there. Yeah. Uh, there are positions that are specifically dedicated or looking for someone with security clearance. So if yeah. you have it and you don't mention that, it's uh, I think you are wasting a lot of opportunities. Yeah. We have, we have a lot of government contracts and that's what they're looking for even within the company right now. So it's worth, it's worth mentioning. <laughs> Definitely. Dr. Miguel? Muted. Is there, Isaac, is there anything that surprised you about the program that, that you got out of it that you said, oh, well, like this wasn't what I was expecting or this was what I was expecting? Uh, I'd like to get your, your perspective on that, your feedback. Yeah, I, I think it was the, uh, <laughs> the business side and, you know, agile training that would kind of shock me. I didn't know that was coming. Um, but it ended up being the most useful actually for me just because of what I had to do. Um, other than that, no, I mean, it was pretty, pretty much what I expected, what I, you know, what I read on the website before I even attempted signing up. So it met, met my expectations. That's wonderful. Thank you. And just one follow-up question. Mm -hmm. uh, you were, you were a, a military vet, veteran uh, yeah. as well. Yep. Uh, during your first few interviews, 
and you know the way when you presented your curriculum and when you presented yourself uh, during a job interview, uh, were there any of the skills that you learned during your military service? Were you able to apply them in in the process of finding new employment uh, and couple them with what, with what you learned in the program? It, it, it kind of came into play, I think, um, probably subconsciously, <laughs> if I had to guess. Um, the actual recruiter for Accenture was a prior army something. <laughs> I don't remember what he was at this point, but uh, he, they specifically, he was there to hire veterans. So um, that showed up on LinkedIn, of course. And uh, as far as using uh skills I, i'm not real sure to be honest with you <laughs> did you do any like when you in your military service were you did you work on the technical side of things uh, is there anything that you learn on the on the field or anything that you could transmit into working with a in a group setting you know with your teammates now like oh, oh yeah doing projects and things like that like, what did that teach you about how to relate with with teammates and how to build a working team to see a project through? Yeah, you're, you're nothing without the team. You can't do it all on your own. That's for 100%. Um, you know, that that's grilled into any branch you're in. Uh, but it, it's the same in, you know, the civilian sector as well. Um, even my first project, you know, is only two of us with a product owner that didn't know anything about coding, didn't know anything about AWS. He just knew how to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, yeah, you, you got to lean on each other and the senior devs are there to help you. Uh, they're scary, but. <laughs> <laughs> they don't bite. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Jake? Hey, Zach. Nice to meet you. My hey, name is Jake. Luke. Um, so I had a question. You said you were, you were into C sharp, uh, real into C sharp, um, uh, when you were going through the program and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. um, would you say that <clears throat> these companies kind of are, especially for like an initial hire, um, uh, for someone that doesn't have any experience in tech or coding, would you say that it doesn't really like, um, matter so much the technology as long as you have expertise in any given area that's going to be seen as kind of like <clears throat> oh he he can learn he knows like uh principles of c sharp these are these are like concepts that can translate over to learning other through other frameworks and other languages and stuff like that yeah. um is that kind of what you experience or would you say it is kind of technology driven and they are looking for specific technologies and stuff i would say it depends on who's doing the hiring um <clears throat> most of what i've seen is it doesn't matter what language they're all they're all pretty close once you actually get to the brass tacks um right. they all perform the same things they just do it different ways most right. people just want to see somebody with a willingness to learn it a willingness to, you know, I don't know everything, you know, mm -hmm. surprisingly, that's what they're looking for. Um, I, I would say the hardest part in applying and getting through is getting past the HR people who write these things, mm -hmm. <laughs> honestly, because uh, half the time they don't know what they're asking, they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a battle. Uh, you just got to keep plugging at it. I mean, right. fire off as much as you can resume wise. Um, but yeah, no, any, I'd say any technology would be fine. Right. Because okay. like I and said, then, I was, I, I promoted myself as C-sharp a lot and okay. I got Angular. <laughs> right. It's uh, whenever as soon as like, you, as soon as you got to talk to somebody who knew kind of what they were talking about, then you could kind of demonstrate your knowledge. Yep. yep. Gotcha. Yep. And most of these guys who do those kind of, te like, you know, the actual technical interviews, uh, like I said, I didn't do a whiteboard, but I can talk and tell them about, you know, what I've done. And they can usually 
yeah, he, he's full of it, or no, mm -hmm. you know, let's let's give him a shot. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. totally. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's, that, thank you, and that was a really good, yeah, uh, great, great question, Jake. Uh, for what we have seen from all the recent graduates that uh, I take the time to to talk and ask questions about and invite to to the spotlights. I don't remember anyone that has said that to get the entry level uh, position, they went through an actual coding interview or a whiteboard technical part of writing code. It mm -hmm. has been just talking and talking. And uh, if, or once you are maybe looking for a mid or a senior role where you will have to go through the technical parts, the technical interviews, the first thing that they ask you is what language do you want to use? So it's choose whatever language you want, just solve this problem that I have here for you. Um, so I think the the technology or the specific languages, it's a little bit or less important unless they are, they are looking for someone that says 10 years of experience in C++, then you need to yeah. know C++, right? <laughs> but for entry-level positions, I, I don't uh, I don't think it's that crucial. Rob, you have a question? Uh, we cannot hear you. You are unmuted, but I cannot hear you. Hello, hello, hello. Ah, there you are. A little bit low. How about, how about, how about, how about that? Okay, okay, okay. okay. I, I, I see the green. It's echoing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's still very, very low. Hello? No, it's like uh, echo. Hello? There we there go. You are. All right, now, sorry about that. I What's just up? moved to a new place, so I had to set up my uh, stuff again. But um, my name is Ram. Nice to meet you, Zach. Uh, Thank you, too. Great, great to hear your story. <laughs> Uh, my question is with regards to um, entry level, as you guys were talking about. Um, do you see uh, at least your company slowing down on recruiting entry level positions? Um, because, you know, as the rise of um, advanced, more advanced AI, that when it relates to coding, um, do you see at least your company or maybe other companies slowing down when it comes to hiring juniors, or there's still as many opportunities as it used to for for that role. I think there's still a lot. Um, from what I've seen, I, I think they're making a big mistake if they really turn to AI this soon. It's just not there. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. um, if you if you keep up with the news on it, you know, Chad GPT yeah. came out and. It got fed all the human data that we've come up with, and it actually got dumber. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay. it, it, you can, you know, I use it to rough out some stuff, and then I can usually yeah. look at it and say, "All right, this will this will work," you know. But it, no, no, I don't think yeah, any no. company should be trying to use that solely <laughs> at yeah, all. I, 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 yeah, I could add a little I, bit to yeah. that. Just, just uh. I think uh, AI is probably not going to replace people anytime soon. I think a lot of people are afraid of that. But you, you are not at the level at the in the industry where AI will replace a human being because right now, to get what you want from ChatGPT, you have to know exactly what you want. And when it comes to software, people don't know exactly what they want. Right? <laughs> so you still need that human interface, that human interaction to say, hey, you know, and you, you work through it in sprints or whatever. So it's not, it's not as, as clear cut as just, you know, some prompts, right? So just yeah. a little, a little more. Yeah. 100% agree. <laughs> yeah. That would be nice. I think it will be a good uh, new role of developer where we just deal with the client, understand what the client needs and tell AI what to code and verify that. But it is still, I think, and my opinion too, it's that there's still, a, there are a ton of openings and I don't think that they will decrease anytime soon. No. Thank Rahim, you. thank you. Mm -hmm. So I, I stepped away for a second, so I don't know if anybody even asked this. Um, you are pretty satisfied, like very satisfied with the role and the position that you have and the company that you work for. Oh yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay. 
And so with uh with that being said, um do you ever feel burnt out or like are you still thirsty and studying and constantly still learning, you know, just on your own? So like learn the looking into more yeah. things, or is that really, uh, I'm still, good to do? I'm still learning. No, every day. Um, what I did with mainly, I got hired for HashiCorp Vault. Um, and what I did at Duke Energy with HashiCorp Vault was on the developer side. What I'm doing here is the admin side, so I had to completely learn all this stuff over. Um, surprisingly right. they said you know we can't find anybody that knows this stuff you know, just happened to find mine through linkedin and got in there um so i'm basically i started like i said last october as a contractor um fully revamped their entire suite um got hired full-time still plugging at it i mean there's so much to be done and it's just it's never ending <laughs> And they keep coming out with new versions and upgrades and new features and, you know, bells and whistles and other programs to add on to it. And it's just, yeah, it's never ending, but no, I don't right. burn, burn out at all. No. All right. So this, this extra learning that you're doing is out of own, out of self-interest more oh, yeah. so than, I mean, of course it's required, right. For you to stay on point with new technologies but out of self-interest mm -hmm. you find yourself constantly like wanting and desiring to still oh, learn. yeah yeah because we have mm -hmm. an actual on-prem application um still in the data centers they're slowly starting to move to cloud um company i work for is, is uh big on the pharmaceutical so they're they're a little iffy on moving everything into the cloud with all the phi and personal information that they hold which I can understand. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, I just, I learn everything in case the use case comes up. Uh, I've got a solution. I don't have to rack my brain for two weeks. And uh, expanding that before we go with, with uh, Dr. Samantha, uh, expanding on, on the same question, what will happen if you are required to do something uh, something new, something that you don't know, let's say a new technology or you need to, or the company decides to do something, use a technology that you don't know at that point. Uh, will Do you think that you will be pressured into fixing the problem right away or that they will give you time to properly learn? And will that learning be part of your uh, daily hours or should, or do you need to learn outside the regular work schedule? Uh, so ours, uh, and that really depends on how good your manager is. Um, <laughs> if he can, you know, assuage some of that to say, hey, okay, look, we, nobody knows what this is. We've got to take some, you know, uh, on the job training to get this going. So, um, yeah, mostly it'd be during office hours. Um, myself, I'll, you know, I'd be laying in bed on my phone reading about it, but I'm a nerd. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, normally they give you plenty of time to um, learn this stuff because they knew I was, on, like I said, only on the developer side of Hashicorp Vault when I first joined. Um, I actually started, is about 20 days or so before a code freeze, which usually means nobody's pushing any code out, no new, any, any changes, nothing like that, because there's just not the staff there during the holidays to, you know, fix what you break. Um so I got, they basically said, Hey, take this whole, you know, I pretty much got three or four months to say, learn it from this side. And then let's see what we can go from there. And that, that rang true with Accenture as well. And even with Duke, you know, off of Accenture, which was my client. Awesome. That's, that's uh, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Samantha, Dr. Samantha. Oh, yeah, Zach. So you're talking about your present, and I know that this is the future of our uh, students, but I would like that you go back 2020 when you were a student without the pandemic, okay? Uh, <laughs> and, and I want that you uh, share with them how much time you were spending, you know, practicing. How What did you do when you were a student? So I, I think that this is very important because at the beginning, some of our students are trying to uh, memorizing like everything that we're doing. 
Yeah. And and it's not it's not the correct path. Practicing is, you know, at some point it becomes familiar. Everything, the all the neural networks start making connections, and we start remembering. Right. But it's it's something that happens. It's not. But if you want to share with them how it was for you, and and what are your advice on that, for, yeah. for they are present. Uh-huh. Yeah, the, there's a term I learned. Uh, don't boil the ocean. And I didn't know what it meant at first, <laughs> but don't try to basically don't try to learn all this stuff and think you're going to hold on to it. Cause you're not, uh, I mean, simple things slip my mind. I'm like, Oh, oh God, how do I do this? If statement, you know, I've done a hundred of them, uh, if not thousand if statements and I have to look up the syntax, you know, it makes me feel dumb, but that's what Google's for. Um, yeah, this, you know, as, as far as time spent, uh, Let's see, because for me, it was from 8 p.m. till 11. Is that what we used to run to? Three hours? Mm-hmm. Yep. So I'd go to bed usually afterward. <laughs> but the next day, uh, whenever I did get time, I really would just, I remember going back through my code that we did in class and either just doing more making more functions, making more statements of, you know, conditionals, try catch error blocks, you know, whatever it was, making different ones and then trying to refactor those into cleaner code. Um, there's, I mean, there's tons of information out there, especially like YouTube and they can show you this, you know, at length after you get through all their ads, but yeah, uh, man, bad to put off time on it probably four hours a day <laughs> extra just just guessing uh i'm trying to remember three years ago it's been <laughs> yeah yeah i remember uh, that's i remember that part a lot i remember uh, like if someone uh, mentions sack immediately comes to my mind a good, really good student interested on learning more than that we were covered during the course and practicing or, or learning on its own. That's why that's a uh, few of the things that I remember uh, really clear from you. Mm. So it uh, wasn't, Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, I wasn't really the same mindset as uh, basically what Jake was saying. Um, I was thinking, okay, I got to learn all these languages and, it's that focus on one, whichever one you like, and get good at it. That's really all you have to do. Um, mm-hmm. Whichever one strikes a chord with you, and it, it's not about you know, oh everybody uses React now. No, not everybody uses React. No, my company uses Java, <laughs> and it's I know nothing about Java hardly. So, um, yeah, just find your niche, whichever one you like, and go for it. I mean, that's really all there is. Awesome. Uh, that's a really good. That's a really good uh, advice. I think for everyone. Uh, I think we have time for our last question. If anyone has question, Doctor Miguel. Again, thank you, Zach, for taking the time to to speak to all of us. Your your feedback is uh, extremely important uh, to our institution. Uh, not just on the academic and administrative side, but um, you know, to our students as well and to our future students, uh, you know, it, it provides them, uh, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, perspective of why they um, it's so important for them to uh, dedicate their time and resources in their education and invest in their education now so that they can you know, uh, try to achieve their, their personal or professional goals like you seem to do. Uh, I think uh, the more than a question, I think that I have for you is just kind of reiterating this very last important point you made right now, uh, which is, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you know, try it and you gotta get good at what you like. Uh, it's, that's true. Uh, the way I see the program and, and and the process of going through the program, I try to simplify it for people that have never been in tech or anything like that. And I, I use the example, I say, you know, going to the full stack program is like going to the buffet, right? Like we've all been to the buffet. 
except there's one rule. You have to try one of everything one, at least once okay? right. to get through the program and to finish. All right. Yep. Then once you finish, okay, depending on your interests, like you said, or your career perspectives or your necessities, you go and take what you've learned. You already tasted a little bit of everything and you know what it tastes like and you know what how to what what it is and you know the basic things about it and then post program you go and you build on all of that right uh with the myriad of information that's out there free and not free but you get that that basic understanding in the program uh would you agree with that yeah 100 percent. yeah yep. yeah and so that's that's something that I that I think stood out to me, you know, in the last thing that you mentioned is that, you know, you have to you have to see this as, you know, the the building blocks upon which you're gonna, you know, build your 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 infrastructure on. And so, you know, life isn't a clear path. And sometimes, like you said, you know, you're expecting to go one way, but you have to go the other and you have to be flexible. And knowing all of these technologies, knowing you know what all the 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 plates and the buffet table tastes like are going to be able to provide you that important important move, you know uh, information so that you can sh shift and you can you can adjust to what life brings at you. So th again, uh, Zach, thank you uh, for that important comment. Absolutely, <clears throat> thank you, thank you, uh, Tyrell. If you have a quick question, yes, I do have uh, one question. Uh, for Zach, Zach, um, based upon your experience, uh, I know you said you mentioned uh, you was like the guru of, of C sharp. You tried to be the guru of C sharp. She's C sharp. Uh, what is like a good language that we should that you recommend that we be proficient in the most? Oh God, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> if I had to choose one. I see Java more than anything. <laughs> as sad as that is, um, Java Spring Boot, and oh. I knew absolutely nothing about it. The code looks insane every time I try to find any mention of our Vault API stuff. Yeah, I can't find it because you know, you know how <laughs> a Java manifest or jar file looks. Um, it, but yeah, I mean, everywhere that I've seen. We use Java. Uh, it's a super broad language. It's secure. It's been around a long time. Um, would I recommend it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'd push uh, C sharp all day. But <laughs> I am a fan of Angular. I will say that I'm I'm a big proponent. I'm on their uh, oh, what is it? Advocate team. Mm -hmm. Um. It's, it's a nice one to learn. I mean, this has got everything you need in there. TypeScript is JavaScript, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you get a few more superset pieces uh, <laughs> built into it. But, I mean, really, yeah, just whichever one makes sense to you, yeah, learn it. Exactly. Stick with it. And then the rest comes. I mean, unless you try to go learn Rust or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little weird, but... Um, Python's a big one too. I mean, you can't get wrong with it. Yeah, I think I think any any language that you pick and you start digging deeper into that, that's the or the language that you like the most because it's most of the time it's not about learning the language or the framework, but it's about learn solving more and more advanced prog uh, problems every time. And if you keep switching between languages, you will find yourself solving the simple problems just with different syntaxes. But if you keep on a, on, on a single language, EV Java, I hope not, or C Sharp or JavaScript or, or something like that. And if you keep on a single one, digging deeper and deeper and deeper, then you will find yourself fixing higher and higher level uh, problems or coming up with a better solutions in that. And then switching syntaxes, is, it will not be a huge deal. But with that answer, uh, we, we yeah, can it's really not. Close, uh, close the spotlight. Thank you very much, Zach. Thank you for uh, answering my Absolutely. message. Thank you for taking the time. And, and I <laughs> hope to keep uh, chatting and discussing uh, technology with you for a lot of years to come. 
Thank you, everyone. Uh, Thanks that's for it. reaching out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to see you. Take care. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Here, Thank you I can draw my email if you have any other questions. Oh, that would be <laughs> I don't great. mind. Yes, please. Yeah. That'll be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'll put it in the chat. Thank you. Uh, San Diego, Global Knowledge University, Education Beyond Boundaries. Please join us for more informative videos on our social media sites and YouTube.